Today we're making uh, doll cradles that will be uh, donated to the uh, Salvation Army for their Christmas uh, toy program. When we first started in 1991, uh, we wanted a, uh, a community service portion of the club, and we've been making doll cradles since 1991. This is all volunteer. Uh, the, uh, the wood that we get is donated to us from the West Virginia Forestry Association and we turn around and go from raw, rough lumber to the finished product and then we donate that to the Salvation Army. Just knowing that, that a child that, uh, that ordinarily wouldn't be able to have a nice toy for Christmas gets, gets one that's heirloom quality and that they can pass down from generation to generation if they want. I organize all the donations. Uh, we do grant requests. Uh, we just got a grant from Oakland Foundation for $2,300 on Monday. Um, Toyota has also been a big uh, grant entity for us as well, giving us a lot of money over the years. And I organize all the donations, the wood from the Forestry Association, uh, uh, Woodcraft uh, donates stuff to us. Uh, Blue Ridge Machinery donates axles to us, so I organize all the donations and I help the guys with whatever they need to make the toys. The doll cradles and the alphabet blocks, and we always make some toy cars, those are the three uh, th items we always make every year. We have various toy cars you see. We have some that are natural, we have some that are painted, we have the alphabet blocks, uh, these are the blocks are actually carved, the letters are carved right into the blocks. One of our members has a computer controlled router machine and he uh, carves the letters right into them for us. And we have 28 blocks per set with two letters per block. So that's a set of 56 letters and numbers and a set of alphabet blocks. We have a train that was made several years ago by one of our members. He donated 15 of these when he made them and uh, we keep this one in the window now and the same member also makes uh, airplane and a uh, little propeller and we have the doll cradle of course which is one of our staples the the doll cradle the alphabet blocks and the cars are something we make pretty much every year now occasionally members will make like the red wagon these aren't made every year but when member who makes these, has the time, he'll make 10 or 12 of them for us. Well, these are some of our cradles. Uh, the cradles are made from ash, which is donated. Um, the um, been making these since 1991. This is some of the wood that was donated to us uh, through the good graces of the West Virginia Forestry Association. Uh, this is ash. We do also have some oak over there beside it and some more ash over there up against the wall. And all of this wood will be used to produce our cradles and our alphabet block wagons. Uh, we should make between 600 and 800 toys this year is what we're expecting. What he's doing here is he is rounding over the uh, headboards and the footboards for the cradles. So we start out with a piece of wood like this where the edges are square and sharp and when you have the finished product is he puts a curve he's putting a curve on the uh, on the piece to make the edges nice and smooth and to make it aesthetically pleasing he'll take it and he'll flip the, the board around and he'll do it on the other side They're making 150 cradles, and so there's a headboard and footboard for each cradle, so there's 300 parts here he's going to be rounding over. What they're doing here is they're preparing the wood to make the rockers for the uh, cradles. The table saws we have are called saw stops. They are state-of-the-art, and they have a breaking system on them. So if your finger accidentally touches the blade during operation, this piece of metal is launched into the blade and the blade sinks down into the table saw. The resulting cut to your finger only requires a band-aid as opposed to having your finger amputated. And you can see this is an example of one of the blades 
that the brake has been triggered on and you can see how it buries into the metal and that stops the blade in milliseconds. What Wayne is doing is he's taking the cradle sides and he's putting a groove, he's putting this dado in the, in the side parts in order to accept the plywood base that will go in at a later date whenever we assemble the cradles. So now we have, the holes are all drilled, all the parts are held in place for us, and we can just take and screw the sides on. The clamp is uh, designed so that we can work from both sides, so that way we have uh, the, whole, the whole cradle being put together at the same time. You don't have to do one side and then do the other. So here we have the jig that we use to put the rockers on. You can see Dan putting the rockers into the slots. And then he'll take the cradle, place it in, in the jig. He'll mark where the holes go with that. And then we have the screws. And that's screw the rockers on. With the processes that they have repeated time and time again, when they mass produce the cradles, they can cut out all the parts in two and a half hours for the cradles. And so it takes about another half an hour, an hour to assemble them and put the finish on them. So you're looking at about roughly three, three hours a cradle. Uh, these are all West Virginia native hardwoods. They're West Virginia companies that donate the lumber to us. And so we're real proud of the fact that we get a lot of community support. You know, we, we couldn't do it without them. Just the lumber alone would most likely cost between ten dollars and $12,000 to make all of these toys if we were to buy it on the open market. And that's, as a volunteer organization, that's not something we're really capable of doing. Some of the members uh, don't plan on working in the shop, so they don't have to, but the members that want to work in the shop have to take a real extensive, it's a day-long safety training class and test that covers all the machinery in the shop, and uh, you have to pass it uh, to be able to qualify to be a uh, dust maker. Anytime we're working in the shop with the machinery on, we have to have uh, uh, earmuffs and safety glasses with the side shields. We encourage all of the guys to wear shop aprons. Occasionally uh, you don't want any kickback on the saws, but occasionally a piece will kick back on you. If you've got a leather apron on, it, it may keep you from getting bruised up pretty badly. And it's mainly just for uh, uh, just convenience of having some of these tools on you so you don't have to go hunting them. When you need them. The shavings the, and, and stuff that comes into the dust collectors, uh, most of that it goes to our members that have uh, either, either one of them for uh, mulch or for bedding for horses or, or other animals. The uh, larger pieces that uh, are too small for us to use for any parts uh, usually go to members that, uh, that burn firewood. We've had a pretty steady membership over the years. We are getting some younger people in, um, and so that's going to help uh, perpetuate the club. Everybody starts out as a beginner. It's nothing to be ashamed of. We, we do ask that you join, and we do have a safety protocol that we ask you to complete before we allow you to use our equipment. But um, if you are willing and you want to learn, we'll be happy to teach you. Uh, we are in Dunbar. Uh, right behind Dunbar Towers on Myers Avenue. We meet the second Thursday of the month. Uh, meetings run from about 6.30 to about 9. They can look at our website, valleywoodworkers.org. They can find out everything they need to know there. Our contact information is there. Uh, they can look at some of the pictures of some of the toys we've donated over the years to the Salvation Army. Uh, we have a shop schedule. We have uh, what we call open shops now, where we have shop leaders like Dan will come in and have the shop open for members to come in and work on their own personal project. 